right here. Tell me that's a car. We have a car. We have a car. We have a car. We have a car. Oh, look at this. This is a story that you are not going to want to miss because late one night, a couple months ago, I get a phone call. And the phone call goes like, Is this Jared? I'm like, Yes. Jared, Adventures of the Purpose? Yes, sir, it is. Am I being recorded? He says. I said, Anytime a conversation starts out like that, you know it's going to be a good story. I said, No, sir, you are not being recorded, but you are on speaker with my wife and my daughter. He said, Okay, as long as I'm not being recorded. I said, No, sir. And the story goes, it was a dark, and I'm not making this up, okay? It was a dark and stormy night in Missouri. And if you know anything about Missouri storms, you're gonna understand what it is I'm about to tell you, he says. We're now in Missouri. Mexico, Missouri is where we're at. Only about a half a mile from the location that we're gonna be searching in the morning. He says, sir, I want you to know, I didn't do it. I said, okay. He said, I'm in my 70s now, and the family needs to know. I said, the family. I said, are we dealing with a homicide? He said, yes, sir, we are. I said, when did this take place? He said, back in 80, 81. I said, tell me more. He said, my cellmate thought that I was sleeping one night when our other cellmate, jailhouse, jailhouse confessions is what they call this, and with that jailhouse confession, supposedly the other gentleman who was telling the story went on to talk about it was a dark and stormy night. And down past the 310 sheds, there's, there's three different quarries out here. And it's the quarry on the right, closest to the old cement plant. He says, you're gonna go down the driveway. But once you get to that end of the driveway, this is where the union workers used to hang out for their picnics. He says, I'm telling you, sir, I didn't do it. <laughs> but uh, the crazy story, all right? Yeah, yeah, all right? It sounds, sounds crazy. Yes. Yeah. But if I did do it, I would have gone another, it was either 50 feet or 50 yards to the north, and I would have pushed the car off in there. I said, okay, so we're dealing with a body inside of a car. He said, yes, sir. Now at this point, I'm turning to my wife. I'm like, Kristen, I'm like, we're on speaker. I'm like, She's like, I don't think he did it. I'm like, listen, he already knows too much. Mm -hmm. Okay, driveway, 50, if I didn't do it, I, I didn't do it, but if I did, okay, now 50 feet or 50 yards, you know, we're gonna figure that out tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Because it's 230 feet deep right there, he says. More and more information as to, like, I almost think he's confessing to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He says, after the storm that night, there was no evidence the next morning of tire tracks. There was no evidence that a vehicle had ever been pushed off in this area. Wow. As though he was there himself. Yeah, how would he have known? Identifying. Mm -hmm. He said, sir, I don't want the authorities to be notified on this. I don't want my name getting out because I'm just too old and I don't want to deal with any of that hassle. I said, well, technically, you know, we do kind of fall under like the whole, you know, media and some of you say, you know, we're not journalists reporting, but we are out here reporting. Yeah. So we do, we do somehow, I don't know if we do or not, fall under the journalist clause. So I said, sir, you know, I said, I keep my confidential informants nice and close. I don't rat them out. In fact, you know, I'll even lose your phone number. In fact, I've lost his phone number. I have no idea what it was. I kind of think I remember his name. I'm not, I'm not going to say what his name is. He, but he said, somebody has to know, the family needs to know, and if anybody can solve this, it's you. I said, okay, sir. I'd really appreciate the information, and the next time I'm over in Missouri, Mexico, Missouri is not that far off of the uh, main interstate that we take, you know, as we're heading east and west there. So here we are. We're now in Mexico, Missouri, with the three ponds, the three uh, quarry pits right nearby. In the morning, we're gonna go see if we can find ourselves a car. That's wild. With a 40 year old missing persons case. Wow, that's pretty wild. This is one episode you're not gonna to wanna to miss.
Here comes the sheriff. The sheriff's coming. Yep. Sheriff's sheriff's come on out. What's going on, guys? Morning, Sheriff. How are you? Good. Good. Jared Lysak, how are you? Good. Good. Hey, we're a special uh, search and recovery team. We work uh, old cold cases, homicides, and missing person cases. We have a case that we're working over here in uh, the quarry, closest to the highway from 8081. With that one, we're dealing with a uh, pretty much a, I'm not gonna say a jailhouse confession, but a end of uh, life confession is what we're dealing with. Okay. He's, uh, he's in his 70s. We have a specific location that we'd like to go uh, head over in Sonar. Plan on being out there for about two hours as we're passing through. We've been working several of the other cold cases across the U.S. the past month, and more than happy to have you uh, research and look into exactly who we are before we uh, do anything. Who's the confessor? Oh, with that one, we uh, we are keeping that one, you know, anonymous at this point. Okay. So, <clears throat> but we do uh, several cold cases. We've been on the news several times this month as well. So who's, the, who's the victim? The victim, the, he did not give the victim's name. He gave the specific location, dark and stormy night, 310 sheds, exactly which uh, road to go down, 50 feet to the north, check out the pond closest to the uh, shelf there. And the family needs to know before uh, his time passes and that the family just needs to have a closure and resolution on this. Okay, do you know who owns the property? That one we do not, so. That's why we're you're here. You're going to need office. permission from them before you go there. That's why we're here at the office today, right now. Alan Levings, yeah. Sounds right. I think yeah. that's right. I think that he lives St. Charles or Winsville yeah. or. Yeah. Because he's got a cabin back there yeah, now, yes. Yeah, there's a house back there. Past that power station. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll work on uh, tracking him down there. Yeah. Appreciate your time. Hopefully, you guys get some get something going. Yeah, absolutely. I kind of got my curiosity up now. All right, sounds good. The sheriff's actually really nice. He just, you know, just like all sheriffs, they just want to make sure that we get permission uh -huh. from the actual landowner before yep. we do anything. So last night, I noticed there was a phone number on the no, tr no trespassing sign over there. Uh -huh. Let's go start by calling that and see if we can get in touch with Alan. Okay. Yeah, so we actually have a real trail cam over there. Street. Gate. Video Thank you for calling fast security. Can you help you? Yeah, hi. Hey, I'm at, uh, outside of one of your uh, gates that you guys have uh, security on. I can see your trail cam. And I need you to uh, get a hold of the property owner for me. We're uh, investigating a homicide and believe that there might be a vehicle in his uh, quarry pit over here and we need access to his property to investigate. So, I don't have any contact information for you, fortunately. Okay. All right, no worries. Appreciate it. You want to see what the power of the internet will do today? Uh, yeah. Oh, I don't know. This is. Hello, this is Jared. Good morning, Jared. Good morning. Good morning. Who am I speaking with? What do you mean you're looking to go to jail? Because oh, uh, he's because we're uh, trespassing over here. That's why. <laughs> That's why. Oh really? Oh yeah. The property is completely gated off. There's a house down here now. Where at this location, there's no no trespassing signs, but. There's access to the road, but there's you know there's there's no signs over there. But yeah, we're uh, we're kind of got ourselves in a little bit of a hot water this morning. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. So hey, no worries. So uh, yeah, we're in the process now of uh, yeah. He's uh, kind of irritated that we didn't uh, notify him that we were even coming to town. I'm like you know we're, we fly under the radar. That's not what we do. <laughs> so. <laughs> But uh, he, he did kind of force my hand with at least giving him your name and your number, so I really apologize on that one. I told him you don't know uh, any other information, but I wanted to call and give you a heads up that uh, you may be uh, just receiving a phone call on that one. Uh, uh, out in the road, did he force you to give him my name and number? Uh, yeah, basically, he said that uh, yeah, if we don't give it to him, then it's whatever their little statues are of withholding information involved in a uh, crime of this thing of this, of, uh, this nature. Uh, yeah. There's no one you can contact to get on the property. Uh, we do have his name. He lives in St. Louis, though, so we're trying to track him down now in St. Louis. Okay. Well, anyway, a while back I was looking online and brought up at least the reasonable current view of the property there. And now I understand what you're talking about. That property has changed considerable because uh, there's more water in the pit now than there used to be. And so the area where that I believe that that would be at in the is there. That house is there. 
my home and property. If you, if you took a picture of that property and then drew a square, there's a lot more water coming back up to the uh, south. Okay. Than what they used to be. So, but if you have to be this deal that we're talking about is there, it's going to be down in the pit itself. Okay, so so really, so really, where the highway and the pit first intersect is that we're saying that we need to look up in that location, or a little further from that, south of that. Which, like I told you before, I overheard some people, so that's all I know about it. But if it's there, it's going to be in deep water. All right, well, we'll see if we can uh, track the owner down. We'll uh, go that route and see if we can get on this property today and not not get in trouble for it. Okay, I would appreciate it. Yeah. Let me know something. Don't get yourself in no trouble, sir. Right. Don't get yourself. I'm sorry this happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're yeah, we're trying not to get arrested on this trip before we go home. My wife would uh, appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, have a great day. Thanks for the heads up. Hey, you're welcome. Thanks for your time. Bye bye, sir. Bye bye. Uh, so we're calling Alan Levings now. We found this phone number on Google. So far, it's ringing. That's a good sign. Hello, Alan. Jared Lysak. How are you? Uh, pretty good. How about yourself? Hey, good. Hey, I'm down here at uh, your property down here in uh, Mexico, Missouri. Uh, we're investigating a, a homicide from 8081 to where it may have been part of the union and the mob hit back in the day with a vehicle in your uh, in your quarry, and we're looking to gain access. So uh, that way, the uh, sheriff Matt Oller over here is uh, good with everything that's going on, and uh, we're doing things by the book. Uh, you have my permission, absolutely. Okay, we really appreciate that. And uh, yeah, we'll do our search and uh, we should know in the next uh, two hours or so. I appreciate your uh, time today, Alan. Is Thank that... you very much, I All appreciate right. it. Sounds good, thanks, Alan. All right, sweet. Let me uh, make sure that we're far enough over and off. And yeah. I think we are. Yeah, you are. Yeah, we're good there. All right, let's put a boat in. All right, sir. All right, ready? You may enter. Here we go. Yeah, so I would think that if you're gonna put a car in here, like it would've been off the top from over there back in the day. Yeah. Yeah, 20 foot here. Yeah, but it makes sense that they would go off this area. Yeah. That's where I would go off. Yeah, just by judging, you know, you figure that, oh, it goes straight down. So. Alright, so nothing over there at the at the bluff. Just Surprise. run the run the road. Surprise. And then we'll head back a little bit further out into the bluff, because I mean, if it went off the bluff, it float a little float bit. A little bit. Yeah. I mean, it could be out 100, 150 feet. Yeah. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Is that a car? All right, come back up. What are you saying? I'm saying. I'm saying there's almost like a square shape over there. All right, we'll come back to it. I don't. I I could just be imagining things. Yeah, I think you're imagining it. Yeah, yeah, I think right. I think, you, I think it's something you want to see. Just my imagination. I mean, because like you were saying, I mean, they're gonna dump it from higher. That way, they can get further out. I would think. I mean, but this is this is the 50 yards north of that ramp area, though. So this is where he was describing. Jailhouse rumor only. Yep, just a rumor. Well, at least uh, at least we gave it a check. We gave it a look. We can uh, sleep a little better at night knowing that we did our part. So, I think the sheriff's gonna sleep better now too. I mean, There's no crime in your county, sir. 
Well, there's a lot of other lakes, though. <laughs> this one is very specific, though, on the description. Is, is Brad in charge of that other one? I mean, just for kicks while yeah. we're here? Yeah. We we'll go talk to yep. him and yep. see Yep, I'll go over there and talk to Brad, but yeah, I know Brad real well. Okay. Yeah, I'd love to scan that one while we're here, just yeah. to mark that one off. Talk to Brad. He said you guys are good to go. All right, real Whatever good. To do. Awesome. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you. All right, no problem. Yeah, I like that. I don't know what that is. We got a barrel. We gotta go over it more. Or something. It could be a car. I don't know. We have to go check that out. Trees 40 years ago. Probably no trees because they had this whole thing that they were mining. Yeah. So those are all planted. That's out the distance. It's off the bluff. Let's go see how deep it is and what it is. Right, so there's that again. But it's not that big. See how it's no, only... That's, that's pretty small. Yeah, it's only like four feet wide. Yeah, it's not a car. Whatever it is. I don't know, man. It seems like all the cars back then were like boats. That's true. Like yeah. huge, giant, freaking... Unless he was in British cars, and that's why they got rid yeah, of it. Yeah, like those Mark V Lincoln Continentals that are half the half a block long. Right, yeah. Look, 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 look! There it is, right there. Right here. Tell me, that's a car! We have a car! We have a car, we have a car, we have a car. Oh. Look at that. All right, let's drop a magnet on it. Uh-huh. Okay, okay, it's right in front of us. Right, ready for you. Um, yeah, pretty much right in front of you. Part of me? I don't think it's a car. I don't know what it is. The other way it looked like a car. On 360, it doesn't look like a car. There we go. There, maybe, I don't know if I'm drag. No, am I dragging or? I don't think that's a car. At this angle. Are you? Are you on it? No. I'm on it. Are you it feels, on it? It feels like something. I mean, it feels like more. I'm grabbing more than a magnet. It feels like more than the magnet, but it, but it releases. Like at this angle, it looks like there might be wheels on it. This we. Oh yeah. See, look at this angle. All right, well, let's pull that. We'll shoot up, we'll dive it. I mean, it's big, whatever it is. I mean, what does a car look like after 40 years underwater in a quarry that is cold and Doesn't has, move. yeah, and no water movement at all? I can't answer that question for you. It wasn't like a solid. No, it wasn't like solid, but my thought is, you know, I mean, how rusted, maybe yeah, it's, it's rusted probably, out. It's probably just rusted to bits. You know, so, I mean, does, does, Metal lose its magnetism when it's rusted. I don't think so. No. I'll have to try that sometime. Yeah, yeah I mean, either either way, I mean, I'm just I'm really curious. Yeah. I mean, if it, if it is the vehicle, that would be amazing. If it's not, I'm just kind of curious in what it is. Saw the water got a little bit colder so thank you to o3 for being today's episode sponsor because without them i would have froze my butt off 
Luckily, I have the O3 thermals underneath. I have the O3 custom dry suit. I have the O3 hood. Plus, I, oh, I even have the dry gloves today. So if you are a diver and you're in the market for a dry suit, be sure to check out O3. And if you're a diver and you're just looking for a wetsuit, they have wetsuits and hoods available for you as well. So anyway, do me a favor, check them out because they're out here supporting us as we're getting in these waters. So, so thanks O3 for everything you do for us. Link is in the description. Okay, so this is the, not a car, but this is the entire shape of what it is that we had. Identify what it looked like a whale on here. Come on down here. So definitely not a car. Is anything or anybody inside here? It's kind of weird. Sorry, over here, where we identified like a wheel or something. Yeah, so that that right there is what looks like the wheel. Well, chill house rumor, that's for sure. Does anybody know what this actually was used for? But aside from that, I kind of want to go this direction a little bit. I might find that barrel that was over here. Alright, this is what it was. Fourth point. Alright, here we go. It's a uh, some type of a big concrete almost like a uh, sloop of some sort. And what we saw, we thought was a wheel, is a big pipe that comes out the side of it. Ah. So the reason why you're having a hard time catching on is because you were catching some of the rebar. Gotcha. It's it's in the concrete as yeah. well as the, uh, like the metal pipe a little bit. Makes sense. So, anyway, that clears this property here. Well, the good news is there's no crime in your uh, county still. It was a uh, great big concrete structure with a uh, big uh, pipe coming off the side of it ah. that represented a wheel on sonar. And then also what appeared to be a barrel underwater. That clears both ponds and uh, I would not put money on the other pond. I mean, it was very specific on that first pond. This other one was next to the uh, three sheds. I wouldn't go any further on this uh, search. So. I don't know why the guy would call you and tell you something like that if there wasn't something to it. Right. But, I guess what we need to uh, spread the word on then right now is if you happen to be getting older and you're looking for like a deathbed confession and you'd like us to go find like something real legit, feel free to drop us an email in the description below. We're more than happy to go jump on it. If it's real, quit making stuff up, okay? At the end of the day. That wraps up another episode of Adventures of Purpose. Matt. Thanks, appreciate it. Thank you for having us. Thanks for help. Yep, appreciate take care. You. you guys take care, have a safe trip. Thank you very much. We'll see you on the next one. Later, later, bye-bye.